is your roving reporter, Carl Reiner, here at LaGuardia Airport, awaiting the arrival of a plane load of eminent visitors, among them the distinguished Viennese authority on space travel and jet propulsion. Here he is now, Professor Ludwig von Spacebrain. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Professor, I understand that you've done a lot of research in the comparative speeds of light and sound. Could you explain exactly what yes. that difference is? Yes, you see, it, that's, a, that's a very good question. Thank you. Good smile. Thank you, sir. Anyway, you see, light travels at the rate of 100, 186,000 miles per second. On, uh, on sound, only the slow pokey, you know, travels 750 miles per hour, you know? So, in other words, you will see something before you, you, will, you will hear it, you know what I mean? I don't quite understand how that works. Well, you just, the light travels, look, I show you, I will pass you with the speed of light, you understand? <laughs> and then I will say something to you and it wouldn't hit you because sound is slower. You mean You'll I hear will, it later? I will see you and then I will hear you. That's right, now watch, I, I'll show I you what, what it's going to be here. See, I'm going to pass you now the speed of light and then you're going to hear me. And I'll say something to you, all right? Here I come. You hear that? No. Hello? You hear that? Oh, yes. Nice. <laughs> 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 Sound catches up. I'll show you again. See? I'll just concentrate. Yes. Here I come. Here. You hear that? How are you? You didn't yes. hear that, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's lower. To make. Professor, could you tell me what is the most important... <laughs> what is the most important single problem in space today? That's a good question. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, the most important problem in space today, I would say, is closet space. That's the most important <laughs> Parking space is pretty troublesome, but, but the closet space, drawer space is good. Drawer space, yes. But closet space, yes, no see. hooks, you know. <laughs> I have a problem, but, but I wouldn't talk about it. Well, before. I see that you probably don't have much closet space in your house. What's the matter? Well, I noticed that the car was a little wrinkled, Professor. What are you, a Ben Brumble? <laughs> what are you talking on with front of the people here? A lot of people don't. You're no bum brimble. Well, clothes do get crushed. No, don't bit. talk to me. I've come down here in my best suit. What are you talking to me like that? I'm sorry, Professor. I didn't mean... No, I don't like what you're talking like that. I, I look, I can dress up here. When I come down, I, I don't want to talk with you. I'm... Gee whiz. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, may I get on, Professor? I'm sorry. I apologize. Yes, you can get on. Now, uh, Professor, why is it when... I'm any place in the country, north, east, south, or west. When I look above me, I always seem to see the same star in relation to myself. But that's here. You see, that, that's where, of course, the whole universe, you know, travels in the relationship to the world. I see. See, now, if there's a star that's there, it keeps on traveling around the Earth with the star, you know, with the Earth. So when the star is there, it keeps continuing in a relationship with you. Well, why does it always seem to be the same star that is above me? Well, that's your good fairy. <laughs> You have a good fairy, don't you? I well. <laughs> Professor, I wonder if you could tell me something. There's something that's been troubling me uh, about interstellar gravitational relationships. Now, there is a gaseous vapor, I understand, between the ionosphere and the stratosphere that seems to be suspended there, even though there's no apparent terrestrial pull from any of the 12 orbits. Is this due to a self-contained terrestrial relationship, or is it because of the ionoscopic gaseous pressures that build up in the ionosphere? <laughs> You think this is infected here, right? <laughs> like I put a little iodine or something there? Put a bandage or something there. Well, we go on, yeah? <clears throat> well, Professor, there's another thing. There's a, there's a saying that the, the, moon, the moon is made of green cheese. Where did that start? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you'll pardon me for laughing on you. <laughs> green cheese! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an old, old, uh, uh, very old legend. That's not true, no. Cream cheese. That's true. <laughs> but I personally think it's Swiss cheese because the holes in it, you know? Oh, yeah. well, well, I, I, I wonder if you can give us a fast resume of what's your theory of jet propulsion and how it operates. Well, you see, jet propulsion is pressure in an object, you see? And when that pressure escapes, it thrusts the object forward, see? Well, what do you mean? Like pressure comes... <laughs> understand? <laughs> You understand? But if I put a resistor there, a resistor, I get, I get pressure. See, I go... <laughs> see, I go back like that. <laughs> see, I go back like that. But there has to be a motor that drives the resistor. A so motor. A motor. So it goes... <laughs> you understand? 
Then there's an escape valve in case you get too much pressure. Understand? <laughs> so jet propulsion is somewhat like this. <laughs> <laughs> That is jet propulsion. No, I just use that at parties. I just skin the house. <laughs>